Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really exciting video for you guys, which is Network KVM on the Raspberry Pi called Pi KVM. So let's get started. Before I begin, I do want to show you guys my excitement on this. This is something that I wanted for a very long time, and this has to be one of my top number one projects ever on the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you guys didn't know what a KVM is, or an IP KVM, or network KVM, it basically stands for keyboard video mouse and it allows you to connect to a computer or a server like you're physically standing in front of it like local access or console access whatever you want to call it and it's very important for people who do system administrations even if you have a home lab it's one of the best tools that you could have for that type of environment now i personally love using this stuff to fix people's computers that's just my thing about it it's like if i have somebody's computer or desktop that i'm fixing I bring it to another room, hook this up, and now I don't physically have to stand in front of that computer to install Windows or install Linux and stuff like that and wait for the commands. Because you know, when you're installing those operating systems, there is no network access. You physically gotta be in front of the computer. But having this setup allows me to fix people's computers remotely or even network administration. This could allow for that and it's on a really good budget. So the version that we're gonna be taking a look at today is the DIY Pi KVM, which is the one where you would have to make your own cable and also provide yourself with either a USB HDMI or the HDMI CSI2. With both of these setups, you could get the whole thing all set up and ready to go and under $60. Now, if you ever try to purchase an IP KVM, they don't go cheap. I mean, the cheapest I think I've ever seen was about $300 and be able to do this on a Raspberry Pi for under 60, it's it's amazing. The problems I have with either ILO or iDrax or even some IP KVMs is the lack of support meaning they still use java applets and and if you get old and if you have even older ones they might need active x and keep in mind active x and java applets they're starting to be phased out we're having harder and harder time to even install these applications on our browsers let alone having something like active x so this software basically modernizes that and you're able to use the browser and also vnc you can vnc into this guy and have local access it's that it's that good now i do want to thank the developer which is murphy he has been a great guy. I've talked to him on his Discord through email and he's given me all the insights on what's going on. So we're gonna jump right into that. Now you could go to his website to download the image as well as other builds. And what's good about his image is that it runs off Arch Linux and he maintains the package. So once you install the image once, you don't have to keep reflashing. All you have to do is Pac-Man and you can update it and you will get all the bug fixes and everything. So anything that happens on his GitHub as far as the project goes, once you hit a Pac-Man update, you're basically getting the latest updates and you don't have to reflash it. Now there are two versions on the download where you could download one for CSI bridge or the HDMI to USB bridge, depending on what you want to use. And uh, I'll leave all the links to the parts down below on what we're going to be using. Now heading back to his main page, I'm going to show you something. If you go down a little bit, he is having this brand new hat. This is like version three of the hat where you could actually pre-order. And in a couple of weeks, I'm actually gonna be trying to get that as well to do a full review. This has more components than what we're gonna be doing on our end because we won't have the ATX controls, but this has ATX controls along with the LCD screen and uh, ethernet pass-through, tons of features on this guy. And it will be ready for the Raspberry Pi 4. And if you want, you could pre-order it now. It will be coming in a couple of weeks in the making of this video. Popping over to this GitHub, if we go down, you can see it supports Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4, and Raspberry Pi 0. Now, on Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 0, there is not much extra components that you need because they both support on-the-go cable. Now, for Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, that's where you actually need an, a separate Arduino board to control the keyboard and mouse inputs. So, it's not as simple to get the 2 or 3 to work, but if you have a Raspberry Pi 0 or 4, it's, you just need to make the USB cable and you're basically ready. Now for full HDMI video, here's the thing. The HDMI CSI bus allows for better control of the HDMI controls. Like you could get resolution changes, color fixes, video compression, a ton of features that you could manipulate and change. Even the EDID you could change on the HDMI CSI bus. But if you use the USB dongle, while it does work and it does achieve better frame rates, you don't have all those controls. And there are times where if your screen goes to sleep on that computer, it will knock off the HDMI display and it won't even come back until you reboot the Raspberry Pi. So it's not as reliable as the HDMI CSI, but it does get more frame rates. Those are the two differences. But I would highly recommend if you can 
get the HDMI CSI so you can get more features with it, like changing resolutions and everything. Now, you do have way lower latency on the HDMI CSI bus. You get 100 ms video latency compared to the usb dongle which is 200. it also has bootable features where you can upload an iso image onto your raspberry pi and mount it as a flash disk or cd rom drive so that's pretty cool as well as ethernet pass through so if you have an ethernet cable only one towards that location you can plug it into your raspberry pi and use the usb as a usb ethernet pass through and provide whatever server or computer that you're working with internet through the Raspberry Pi, which is really cool. And it works through Wi-Fi as well. So if you have a Wi-Fi connection on your Raspberry Pi, you can still use the USB Ethernet pass-through and provide internet for that computer. Mind-blowing. Uh, a couple of other things is, like I said, the VNC. That's really cool because you could use VNC instead of having to go into a web browser. And uh, ATX controls. ATX controls is pretty huge on certain things where you could actually control the power, reset button, and all this other stuff. Long press, short press. Anyway, it's amazing and there's a lot of things going for it. The best of all is that you have so much of these features for under $60. Like, if you do want to, you could actually get his hat which provides all these without having to solder. Now, this is the DIY device over here. You can see this image. This has all the MOSFETs to trigger the power button and the reset button and everything else. And you can see the hard drive activity lights. This is what you need to build if you want to do it yourself. We're not going to be building the ATX controls. All we are going to be using is the USB line as well as the HDMI. And that's it for this whole thing. So I'm going to show you how it looks. So the first setup that we're going to be looking into is the USB HDMI setup. And the one that I have right now is not the link that I have down in the description below because the one down in the description below is about $12 and it's a lot easier to use. But then again, all HDMI USBs have these little weird quirks to it. So it's not as stable as you want it to be. Now, as far as the USB cable that I'm using, it is a splitter cable. And I just put some Keplon tape onto the power side of the USB cord that goes into the computer. Now, this is very important. I would highly recommend not doing this. I just got lazy and I just taped it up, but I would disconnect the cable completely because you don't want the power to feed back to the USB port and blow out USB port. So do as I say, not as I do. Everything that I have will be linked down in the description below. So if you want to build your own setup, it's pretty easy. Again, I highly recommend testing out his kit because it has everything under the sun on there. So once you download the image from whatever you want, uh, you burn it into the SD card and it's completely headless. You don't need to hook up a monitor to it to set it up the first time. All you need to do is head over to that URL, log in with admin and admin. And I already have VNC enabled, but we're gonna pop over to KVM. And you could see it's already hooked up to my Seed Odyssey x86. And um, let me see, pop it into here. This is how it looks just running it. Now, if I wanted to pop open a keyboard because I can't press certain keys on my web browser, I can. I could just hit over the system, show keyboard, and if I needed to hit the Windows key, I can, and it'll pass through the Windows key. Or if I needed to press any other key. Now, this, you could tell, is really made for Linux because if you go over to Shortcut, look at this, res sub, resub if that's how you would say it, or that's how I would say it. But you could just do resub and it'll completely do a reboot on the system. And you have all these shortcut keys that you could press. As well as macros, you could record your macro and have it completely repeat or do whatever you want to do on this thing. Your drive is what I was talking about. You could actually mount like a USB drive into here. If I was to click Ubuntu, uh, select it as flash because I know that's a flash disk, and I could connect it to server and you'll see the disk over there. As far as ATX control, like I said, I don't have anything hooked up to it, but you could do reset, power button long or power button short. And then over here is your system. Now the resolution, you can't really change because I'm using the USB HDMI right now. But if you're using the CSI version, HDMI CSI, you could change this and you could change the stream size and there's more settings you could play around with. And yeah, ultimately this gives me remote access to the computer physically. Now you might be thinking, hey, I could do this with VNC or some other software, but what you can't do is this. Watch, if I go over to the power button, restart the computer, and now it's physically going to go into the boot, and I could hit delete a couple of times, and I'm in the BIOS. You can't do this with remote, and this is some, sometimes you need this just to set up people's computers or set up servers. This is why you would get this KVM. And for such a low budget, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, my mind is blown every time I go through this. So let me show you guys. If I go over here to UEFI or Windows Boot Manager, or I only got three items or four items right here, right? 
So I'm going to go over to Drive and pop this in here, flash, connect to server, and I am going to reboot this thing. So I'm going to do discard changes and reset, reset without saving. And if I pop back into the BIOS again, and I hit back over here, there we have it. Another option right there, Linux file CD gadget. That's my Ubuntu CD that I just inserted. And I could boot directly from here. And if I had a Windows disk or a Windows USB, I could boot from the Windows USB. And that's what I mean. Now, let's boot back into the system and I could show you how smooth it actually runs. And I'm just gonna pop open uh, Firefox and show you guys. It does do 30 frames per second on the USB HDMI. And I will do YouTube, Nova Spirit Tech. And I'll just pop the video that's right here. And this is full screen. And I'm still getting like 30 frames per second over the web browser. I mean, it's not in 1080 right now, I don't think. Well, maybe it is, but the quality is not that great streaming over because the, the way how USB uh, HDMI dongle works with this. But you see this? This is streaming off my browser at full 1080 off my computer. Let's pop over to the HDMI CSI setup and we could see the difference in speed and quality and what we could adjust over there. All right, so now we switched over to the HDMI CSI-2 and you could see that it looks pretty much the same, but the biggest difference is I could actually now change the resolution. So if I go into system settings and go into displays, there's a list of resolutions that I could actually change and it will adjust to it. So if I want to go to 720, hit apply. There you go. The resolution has changed to 720. Now, if I wanted to switch back to 1080, I could do that using the CSI bridge. That's what's the huge difference between the two. Not only that, it's a lot more stable when you're running this. Now, I'm going to keep this configuration and I'm going to show you a full screen uh, image of the video that I was playing before. And I'll pop that into full screen. Now, it plays just like it would before, just a little frame drops, like not frame drop, but and it's a little bit less. Instead of 30 frames, it's about 25 frames per second. So you do lose that 5 frames per second due to the bandwidth of the CSI bridge. But supposedly on the CM4, we should be able to get 60 frames per second like this. But now, if you could see how this is working, I'm going to actually pause this and show you. If I go into system, I actually now have a stream quality setting and I could change the compression. So if I go down to 10%, it's going to reset this. And you could tell the difference between that. You see how it's all pixelated? But it's the stream compression, and that may that means I could work this using a Wi-Fi connection, not an Ethernet. So if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, low-quality content like this, you can at least still stream at 25 frames per second, just in a lower quality. Now, I could adjust this back up there. I could actually modify the EIDI files and give it more resolutions. There's just a lot more I can do using the CSI bridge and it's a lot more reliable. Now, one more thing I want to show you guys is if I was to go into the terminal and once I'm in here, you would type su dash to get into root and the password for root is root. And in here, you would change to a read write system. And then I could do pack man dash syu and i have not updated this version yet but you'll see that once this updates it's actually going to pull the latest so i'm going to hit yes on that uh it's going to pull the latest version of let me see if i can find it here um kvmd right here so it will update the kvmd and the kvmd update uh, platform and the kvmd web terminal so everything gets updated. If there's a bug or any fixes or updates like that, once you run this little command, Pacman uh, capital S Y U, you get everything updated. When his Raspberry Pi hat comes in, I will re-review that and actually talk a little bit more about his project and how he came to be and where you could get all this stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I My mind was blown when I found this and I was testing it. It was so easy to set up. I would highly recommend you guys checking it out. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. I will also leave a link to his Discord. This way you could ask the developer directly if you need any help. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.